All right, uh, we're g going to, and uh, we should start. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who is joining us today. Welcome to the today's CNCF webinar. Kubernetes storage is more than CSI. Do it the right way with the open EBS way. Um, my name is Orlin Vasilev and I'm a software engineer at VMware and I'm also proud cl cloud native ambassador. I'll be moderating uh, the webinar today and like to welcome our presenters for today. Murat, who is the VP of products in MyData. Brian is developer advocate at MyData. And Kiran, who is the chief architect for MyData. Um, first thing first, um, some housekeeping items. During the webinar, uh, you're not allowed to talk uh, as an attendee. Um, please make sure you post all your questions in the Q&A box on the bottom of your screen. Um, uh, also, this is official CNCF webinar and such subjects to the CNCF uh, code of con conduct. Please do not add anything that on the chat or questions that will violation of that code. Um, basically, be, be respectful and follow the, uh, the participants and the presenters. With that, I would like to uh, hand over to Murad, Brian and Kiran to kick off the today's presentation. Thanks, Orlin. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining. I want to say welcome to all. My name is Brian, and I'm a developer advocate for Maya Data. I'm joined by two of my colleagues, Marat and Kieran. And on this webinar, we're going to talk about OpenEBS, a CNCF-managed open source container attached storage solution for Kubernetes. OpenEBS is used by many organizations, and it's a technology that's flexible across a lot of different uh, use cases. These organizations are using OpenEBS to transform their Kubernetes clusters into a resilient data plane, and they're turning Kubernetes itself into a storage array. That's why a lot of people were talking about OpenEBS at KubeCon in San Diego. And, uh, who is my data? We are contributors to the, uh, we are code contributors to the CNCF, and uh, uh, we will talk today uh, with OpenEBS's founder, one of OpenEBS's founders, Kieran, and we'll get some roadmap info from our uh, Maya Data's head of product, Marat, as well as a demonstration from me of OpenEBS in action. Then we'll open up the floor to questions at the end, but please do submit your questions early in the, uh, in, in the Zoom interface at the, using the questions interface at the bottom. So now we're joined by Kieran to talk a little bit about Kubernetes and OpenEBS. Hi, Kieran. Hi, hey, Brian. Great to be here. So Thanks. to speak about uh, the stateful applications in Kubernetes, uh, the short answer that I would give is, the state, state of stateful applications in Kubernetes is always evolving. Uh, I have definitely seen a lot of improvements in the last three years that I've uh, worked in Kubernetes and I still see it's uh, evolving. So in fact, like if you look back, uh, the community was mainly focused on making sure like uh, we, we connect to an external storage and that interfaces have now evolved into what we call a CSI. CS is definitely promising, but it has a lot in terms of uh, extending uh, the interfaces to perform a higher objective or like you know higher problem that users have around data management, right? So data management is uh, something beyond connecting or deleting volumes. It involves uh, uh, running distributed applications that require multi-tiered storage. Uh, need some data protection mechanisms and ability to seamlessly migrate from one cluster to the other. In fact, like with the adoption of Kubernetes, uh, there's a lot of use cases that are coming up in terms of migrating from non-Kubernetes environment into Kubernetes uh, uh, clusters. So in fact, like as we speak today in the SIG storage, there's talk about formation of a SIG data protection that in fact talks about or like, you know, is going to focus on resolving some of these problems that I just mentioned. I'm also excited to be part of a new Linux foundation project called Soda that's going to be launched and it's also going to be focused on data management. 
And there are several projects that are uh, complementing the features that are available in Kubernetes itself. Uh, OpenEBS is one of them. Velero is another project that I'm uh, closely associated with and uh, I've used. So to come back to your question on uh, how OpenEBS or you know, what aspect of uh, uh, the puzzle that we solve, um, and to just could go back on the history a little bit, right? So uh, Kubernetes is definitely a game changer. It has changed how applications are developed and deployed. Uh, and early on, we saw the potential in Kubernetes to change the way the storage software itself can be written um, in open uh, community driven, uh, similar to Kubernetes, right? And that's how OpenEBS uh, kicked off. In short, OpenEBS is helping users convert Kubernetes into a data plane. We'll probably get into that uh, a little more in this talk. Uh, in fact, one interesting thing with Kubernetes is the original authors never anticipated the way Kubernetes itself um, is being used today. Definitely, they would have not thought of it as a data plan, data plane. In fact, you know, today Kubernetes is used to orchestrate VMs or even other Kubernetes clusters itself. So I'm excited to be working on uh, OpenEPS and yeah. the other related projects. Yeah, it's an exciting time for OpenEPS. Can you? Uh... Tell us why so why so many people are interested right now. Yeah, so one of the primary reasons that I uh, talked about is Kubernetes itself uh, that we just touched. Uh, the other two things uh, that draw the interest in OpenEBS, I can kind of attribute it to the background with which the contributors or the founding contributors came from and the early support that we had from the user community itself. So just to talk about the founding team, um, this team uh, has helped even you know you could say like coin the term software defined storage and worked on several uh, software defined storage systems and uh, in open source as well and in fact like uh, some of the team has worked on the first containerized storage using uh, freebsd jails right uh, this actually helped us uh, as a team to work closely with universities enterprises and uh, uh, cloud service providers to set up storage in their data centers and look closely at the challenges faced uh, with monolithic lock-in kind of an architectures. And uh, Kubernetes promises to solve some of these problems. Uh, it basically helps us break down this monolithic into microservices and then also build on top of uh, open source technologies. So that's how OpenEBS started and OpenEBS feeds in uh, with the same principles. So it's uh, built using containers. It uses the microservices uh, design for philosophy, and it is completely orchestrated by Kubernetes. I, I think it would be fair to say that uh, OpenEBS is completely Kubernetes, Kubernetes native uh, storage solution, and uh, up to date, it only supports Kubernetes. Great, thanks for, uh, for that. Uh, discussion and a little history. Um, so if I can ask, why did you contribute it to the CNCF? Right, uh, so CNCF, uh, it's become this neutral home for any cloud native open source project that uh, we develop. It helps the maintainers um, uh, to put the entire project through a much wider and stricter lens. Uh, it also helps the adopters, you know, like we have Orange, Arista, and uh, Comcast, not only adopt us, uh, also provide them a commitment that it's not just open source, but it's also it also follows the open governance rules that uh, CNC have set forth. Great, absolutely. Thank you for that, Kieran, and uh, thank you everybody for uh, for for uh, bearing with us. And I wanted to share a comment that our CTO is fond of, of uh, using, which is that applications have changed and someone forgot to tell storage. With Kubernetes, app deployments are automated, highly dynamic. OpenEBS storage has the same characteristics as this. This makes it easy for loosely coupled cross-functional development teams to use familiar Kubernetes commands to manage storage for their suite of microservices. The storage is under the full control of the app developers and SREs and is not a centrally managed resource to be maintained by specialized personnel. OpenEBS is container attached storage. 
It's implemented inside of Kubernetes and it takes advantage of the availability and security features already present in the Kubernetes cluster. What container attached storage does for you is really twofold. It makes stateful apps as easy to deploy as Kubernetes in Kubernetes as stateless apps. And it makes data mobile so that you can move apps to a different cloud regardless of data requirements. When you have a storage solution that's external to Kubernetes, your whole, whole cluster becomes tightly coupled to that storage provider. If you have an external app storage uh, that is on an on-prem storage array, how are you going to move that app to the cloud? If your external app storage is from a cloud provider, will they help you migrate your data to a different cloud provider? With OpenEBS, you put a fully featured storage array inside Kubernetes. It can use any collection of block devices on virtual or physical nodes, and it can turn those into raw, into enterprise grade resilient storage with replication, snapshots, clones, encryption, and more. What is OpenEBS? It's the CNCF project with the truly cloud native approach to running state apps. OpenEBS is implemented with a pluggable storage engine architecture. The local PV engine is often used for provisioning local storage in an automatic fashion. CStore is another storage engine with features like replication and snapshotting. You can create a Kubernetes storage class that uses CStore to store the data in three replicas on three separate nodes, where each node has, for example, 12 GP2 disks attached and aggregated and attached and aggregated into the CStore pool. You can then reference that storage class, whether it's local or remote, and replicated in a PVC spec in your application deployment manifests. Or you can simply make it the default storage class. When the pod referencing that storage class comes up for the first time, OpenEBS will create a volume to match the PVC. Since OpenEBS provides storage and works in any Kubernetes, it's useful for just about any stateful application you might want to run. Lots of users use it for GitLab and other CI-CD frameworks. We've also seen an increasing adoption as a sort of substrate for Kafka and other data pipelining technologies. Um, and machine learning is another application that can really benefit from data agility since the training sets need to be made available wherever the GPUs are. So now I'd like to show you how easy it is to set up a stateful application in Kubernetes with OpenEBS. It'll just take me a moment to switch over to a terminal. In our setup, we have installed OpenEBS already and configured a simple CStore pool. Above, you can see the manifest for the storage pool claim. The list of block devices below that shows that the devices referenced in the configuration are claimed by OpenEBS. These could be pretty much any block device, but in this case, they're dev NVMe 2 and 1 on three different machines. Next, take, let's take a look at the storage class definition that references this claim. It specifies that volumes created in that class always have three replicas of the data. You can see we've already applied this configuration. So the system is already set up, set up in a way that a typical enterprise software developer might use it to develop a microservice. If that developer needs an object store, why not deploy min.io directly within the cluster?
Okay, well that creates, let's look at the PVCs associated with that MinIO application. And you can see that the PVC is bound and is using the correct storage class. Ah, there it goes. So you can see the MinIO came up just fine on its storage. And that with OpenEBS, it's just as easy for developers to stand up a stateful application as it is to stand up a stateless one. With that, I'd like to hand it over to Marat to take us through some of the new features coming in OpenEBS. Thanks, Brian. And uh, my name is Murat Karstolu. I'm one of the uh, maintainers of uh, OpenEBS and also community observer. I'm in the Slack channel as well as Brian and Kiran and all of our team. OpenEBS is on a, a monthly release, uh, release cadence and we are excited that we are approaching to 1.5 release as uh, soon as uh, maintainers, uh, we keep the planning public and all users and uh, our contributors are welcome to attend our uh, planning and prioritization meetings. And this time, uh, if we list all the features and updates, that would be uh, five, six slides here, but I have summarized the most relevant high level uh, updates uh, on this slide and as you may already aware by now OpenEBS is granular has multiple storage engines that we uh, maintain and uh, Jiva, C-Store, local PV are production uh, great engines uh, uh, dynamic local PV provisioner uh, uh, C-Store and Jiva uh, all are used in uh, uh, production by large enterprises today. Uh, Maya Store is uh, one of our new alpha engine targeting uh, high performance use cases and recently got uh, encryption and also adding replication and rebuilds at the moment. Uh, uh, CSI, uh, Kiran uh, talked about this a bit. Community has uh, made a great progress. Open, EBI, uh, open EBS uh, CSI support is getting uh, matured and but that's just the interaction with Kubernetes and there is much more behind the scenes to get the API calls executed in the storage world of things and not disk manager storage engines are big part of our uh, data plane work. On the operational uh, and infrastructure side, uh, uh, Kudo is a great uh, open source operator concept that we are looking uh, recently and OpenEBS Kudo operator is currently in the review uh, test. Uh, will be uh, released uh, with 1.5 uh, again uh, and also ARM uh, infrastructure support is something recently uh, uh, introduced. We have been talking about this quite a long time, especially with the availability of new ARM instances in the cloud vendors like uh, M6G, R6G, C, 6G on AWS and Packet also has very strong, uh, I think it's called C1 large ARM instance like 96 physical uh, arm cores and bonded uh, 20g network very affordable makes it super attractive for kubernetes deployments and with the help of our community members uh, starting from one uh, release 1.4 uh, we had arm 64 uh, builds for GUI in the control plane now getting into automated builds including c store into that soon and and next please and if we look at the uh, Next slide, uh, Brian. If we look at the high level roadmap, OpenEBS and its control and data plane components are core to our uh, community and Maya data as enterprise uh, customers as well. Enterprise solution is a bit more than OpenEBS on top of uh, that we have uh, with OpenEBS director, users get user interface and monitoring, we provide data resiliency and chaos engineering uh, with Litmus and other open source 
project in the CNCF landscape and also cross cloud and data mobility uh, with the Kubemu project, which is new under development and, and data uh, and then uh, policy driven optimization operators for uh, day two operations also in, in design uh, review right now. Uh, if you can uh, switch to next again, uh, Brian. Uh, we believe in this uh, mission to turn Kubernetes into data plane. It's been a, a long journey for us since the days of uh, software defined storage to app defined sto storage with OpenEBS. We pro uh, proved it now, trusted by 10,000 of users. Uh, they are running OpenEBS on prem and on the cloud. Storage is a big piece of uh, the puzzle, always achieving freedom from uh, cloud or any type of lock-in because data has gravity and, and your help is always appreciated here, seeing users help each other in the Slack channel and also a CNCF ecosystem interaction between projects, uh, accelerating users' pipelines, hearing feedback from users is what keeps me and my team always motivated. Uh, you can be part of it. It's extremely diverse uh, community and we have Rust experts uh, coding uh, very uh, low level uh, storage uh, parts. Also we have Go issues for uh, beginners. We also have a goal to train and coach new graduates and bring them to Kubernetes ecosystem. So uh, we had interns now uh, became core contributors uh, to key CNCF projects. And also again, uh, Brian mentioned, so we, Maya data didn't just uh, be, uh, become one of the uh, top uh, CNCF project contributors. So we are uh, by coincidence, so by uh, ecosystem users come uh, before the company always for us. And our mission, uh, if ecosystem succeeds, we will all uh, have a better future built on the foundation of Linux and open source ecosystem. That's all I wanted to say. And so giving a mic back to you, uh, Brian. Great, thanks, Marat. And uh, now we'll open up the floor to Q&A. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you for the great presentation. Um, I see one question, oh, sorry, three questions on the Q&A box. Um, can you guys take a look at it uh, or should I address them? We have a question from Felipe. If you can elaborate on the data replication. Yeah, uh, yeah. let me take one question. Could you compare Jiva and C store? Uh, uh, historically, so Jiva uh, came uh, first because we wanted to prove that uh, this uh, uh, DevOps way of uh, providing storage uh, uh, can be used or useful for this new persona. But uh, between Jiva and C store, uh, Jiva uh, creates uh, sparse files on top of uh, existing uh, file system, uh, most of the time the root uh, root disk. So it, it is uh, useful in the environments where your uh, volumes are uh, smaller and when you don't have specially additional disks to manage, uh, let's say uh, edge devices or small environment or, or uh, mini cube deployments. So you only have the uh, OS disk from the uh, nodes, you can create a highly available storage uh, by creating sparse file on multiple nodes. Uh, where uh, C-Store is a more advanced version where uh, it, it uh, brings in this disk management capability or, or striping or rating disks on multiple uh, nodes as well. Uh, so where you have additional nodes and where you need larger uh, volume sizes. And then uh, on top of that, it C store uses copy on write uh, file system underneath, which means the snapshots and clone capabilities are uh, more efficient. And then where with Jiva, when you take a snapshot and clone, which uh, naturally becomes a full copy of the data. And on the C store side, it's just a pointer. Hi Murat, I can probably take uh another question. I'll just read out the question and then uh, answer it. Uh, can Kubernetes cluster with OpenEBS act as a dedicated storage cluster for another Kubernetes cluster? Uh, 
though with the community um, project that we have, uh, we recommend using OpenEBS on Kubernetes cluster itself, but we have had conversations in the community channel where uh, users have tried to do just exactly what um, this person is asking. Um, so if you look at the internals of OpenEBS, uh, OpenEBS is, uh, provides block uh, volume services and the block volume services in turn translate into Kubernetes objects. For example, you have for each volume a service uh, that they use as a cluster IP, but you can easily change it to use an external uh, IP that can be accessed from uh, an VM or like another instance outside of the Kubernetes cluster that can access the storage. And then let me uh, take this new question. What uh, about IOPS in my store? Is it uh, fast? Uh, comes from Sergey. Uh, uh, yes, my store. Uh, so the uh, after C store, which uh, like I mentioned, uses a copy and write file system. Uh, our core uh, strength is uh, storage, and we started this uh, Maya Store uh, project a year ago now. So I wrote everything from scratch. It's written in uh, Rust and then built from scratch, like I mentioned, and it uses Intel uh, 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 SVDK uh, libraries. And, and our goal was to remove the overhead of iSCSI. And, and other uh, overheads in the network uh, layer and, and uh, also uh, do this in the user space. So we were able to achieve uh, like single digit uh, loss uh, even with the replication over uh, net network. Uh, so which means if you are using MVME devices, which are now, uh, which you can get uh, multiple millions of IOPS. So uh, in a demo at last COP, uh, KubeCon, we demoed, uh, uh, I don't exactly remember, but multiple millions, I think, uh, like five, six million IOPS in a single container, uh, uh, very close to the raw device performance. So. But I, I can take another uh, question. Uh, so this question is from Anonymous. Uh, we've tried uh, Rook, um, uh, but found Ceph to be a bit complicated to manage. Why should I consider Open EBS and how it differs from Rook? Um, touch upon the aspect of how Open EBS differs from Rook. Uh, so Rook is a orchestration platform. So I see multiple storage engines being orchestrated by Rook and Rook is focused on uh, just being a uh, orchestration layer for storage. With OpenEBS, uh, we have the orchestration layer as well as the uh, storage engines. And there are multiple storage engines that OpenEBS supports. We just touched upon the C store and Jiva, but we also have local PV, which is um, basically a, a dynamically provisioning of the like a local PVs is supported in OpenEBS. And there are like different flavors of local PV that we can use from host path to block devices to uh, even using on top of uh, ZFS. Uh, if, if you would like to set encryption on the uh, local PVs, then ZFS is a good option. And MyStore is, uh, uh, you can already try MyStore, which also has similar capabilities that are being built in. If we are good with time, let me take another question uh, from my, uh, Maji, uh, Maj Majesh. I hope I pronounce your name right. So for uh, cloud, GKAKS, EKS, uh, I should use uh, C store. I think the uh, question is, uh, why should I use C store? Uh, uh, OpenEVS uh, abstracts the storage management and layer and it, it unifies, but uh, comes with the additional benefits, of course, uh, especially uh, with cloud volumes. If you are running Kubernetes on cloud, you can uh, replicate volumes across uh, multiple availability zones. That's one uh, benefit our users uh, find uh, useful most. And the second one is uh, you can also use locally attached disks, which are not uh, persistent in a cloud environment and, and replicate over multiple. So that would give you a lower cost, higher performance storage devices, but also highly available. And 
Uh, another alter, uh, another uh, benefit is uh, this uh, known uh, cloud volume uh, mount on mount uh, issues uh, when it's uh, replicated uh, or, or uh, sometimes uh, mount on mount can take uh, quite some time or get stuck. And in that case also OpenEBS, our users find it useful to have a replica. And, and this probably would help another question uh, from Philippe. Hello, I would like to know if you can elaborate on data replication over multi-cloud, restore in case of failure uh, and tanks. So, uh, yes, and if you have, a, uh, uh, we are also using in the enterprise version of OpenEBS, or, but the, the plugin is uh, available open in the open source repository leveraging Velero with uh, some of uh, additional code on top of Velero. Uh, we, OpenEBS has a Velero plugin. You can create a scheduled backups of, uh, complete backups of your application and PV PVCs into a S3 backend. And then from that uh, backend, you can uh, asynchronously uh, Re restore to any cloud. This solution is used uh, again uh, by our uh, users in the community. You can uh, you can see uh, users uh, uh, use this to uh, provide some type of uh, multi-cloud availability solution. You can have application running in one cloud, and if there is a availability issue on that cloud. Uh, recover the data and application to on-prem or another cloud vendor from the uh, scheduled backup. Anything you wanna add here, uh, Kiran? Or... Uh, I think that's good. Um, so we, uh, like we said, we have like other efforts also ongoing, uh, like Kubemu is another project that's helping us uh, to enhance the capabilities around that area. Uh, we have a couple more minutes, so if you guys have any questions, please post them in the Q&A box on the bottom. I see one more question regarding OIDC. Uh, this has come up in the community and we are working on implementing uh, the authentication via OIDC. That's a uh, work in progress. Another question from Sergey: Will replication cloning be implemented in my uh, store? Uh, uh, yes, yeah. So re rebuilds are, as I am aware of, uh, uh, are in progress right now, and and also replication. And Maya Store will be able to replicate uh, uh, across uh, multiple protocols. So, uh, you can use MVME uh, over Fabric or iSCSI. All right, there was a question about the, the slides in the video. The slides will be later on today available online as well as the video. And then and another question, do you plan to package OpenEBS with Velero by example to offer a full persistence and, and backup? Uh, so it is in the free OpenEBS director uh, uh, solution so that the, if you are an OpenEBS user, you can sign up to this uh, SaaS uh, offering. It's free to use again. Uh, 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 that uh, gives you a user interface for uh, OpenEBS with Velero, which we call DMAS, Data Migration as a Service. And it is probably closest, it, it can get to uh, a full uh, persistent and backup uh, solution for storage. So you can take a scheduled backup from the user interface to an S3 target, AWS, uh, GCP, or Minio, 
and then recover a uh, Uh, one more question. So you create a storage solution over multi-region. Uh, will there be an impact on performance? Uh, uh, yes, if you're same with Kubernetes clusters, if they are uh, spreading across multi-region, uh, they need to have a, a good network communication in between. Latency would uh, have an impact on storage performance as well. But the, in that case where the latency is higher, we recommend uh, uh, the solution I recently mentioned, the DMAS. So you can take a, a kind of a asynchronous uh, uh, replication. You can call it asynchronous uh, replication, but it's more like a disaster recovery solution. Uh, back up on one uh, cluster and instead of synchronously replicating asynchronously uh, recover uh, data on another cluster we have time for a couple more questions so please ask your questions in the Q&A section on the bottom. There's a question from Oliver on, uh, I, I think I would raise it as, do you have any plans of optimizing the uh, rebuild in the case of VM, uh, com VM completely getting lost and any VM coming up, I think. Uh, yes, uh, that's in progress. And uh, with each release, we are also automating a lot of operations around the rebuilding and optimizing that. Maybe I can try to take uh, this last one. Do you have any benchmark comparison with Ceph? So Apple's, Apple's comparison would be difficult because uh, OpenEBS is a granular per, uh, per uh, application storage. So it grows uh, easily where scale out storage solutions, you uh, pre-configure, pre-deploy it for a different different purpose and, and, and you can, uh, uh, it has a larger uh, blast radius uh, than uh, OpenEBS. Uh, uh, so we do have some comparison, uh, but it, it differs in every every scale. So one, it wouldn't be fair to uh, run benchmark on one workload versus uh, when you grow to thousand workloads. So OpenEBS, uh, you get the same performance where uh, on scale out storage solutions, uh, over when you put multiple solutions, it, it degrades, degrades. So it's not fair to compare to a scale out storage solution. Yeah, I think there's a good one from Alec. Maybe just try to take this as a last question. Uh, the question is, can you talk about how storage engine updates are performed? Uh, so one cool thing about OpenEPS is it's all in user space and running as Kubernetes pods. So that helps you to perform the upgrade just like any other uh, Kubernetes applications. You can actually do rolling updates to get the storage engines updated. And uh, with uh, 1.0, OpenEBS 1.0 that we just released, like uh, post the Barcelona KubeCon, we have Kubernetes jobs that go and help us do the rolling updates on the storage engines. 
All right, thank you. With that, I think we can um, close up the Q&A uh, session. And just a reminder from the CNCF, don't, if you're in the area of Sydney or Seoul, don't forget to subscribe yourself for the Kubernetes Forum. It's a great place to meet professionals and discuss your issues or your uh, desires about the Kubernetes. With that, I would like to close. Thank you, Morat, Brian, and Kieran. Great presentation. Uh, thanks for joining us. This webinar will be recorded and it will be posted later today. We're looking forward to seeing you on the future CNCF webinars. Have a great day, everyone, and see you next time. Thank you.